Welcome to the Relationship Recovery Podcast, hosted by Jessica Knight, a certified life coach who specializes in narcissistic and emotional abuse. This podcast is intended to help you identify manipulative and abusive behavior, set boundaries with yourself and others, and heal the relationship with yourself so you can learn to love in a healthy way. Hello, and thank you for being here. I released a podcast on fawning, and it was mostly on what fawning is, what is happening, and why we do it, but I didn't really talk about what it feels like. And after I finished that podcast, I was thinking that I didn't cover what this looks and feels like when we're in it. And in the area of narcissistic and emotional abuse, this comes up almost all the time because we really can't lean into the other trauma responses in these situations as easily and as quickly as we can go into fawning, right? Because if we're thinking of flight and freeze, we really can't fight because if we do, we'll be told that we're wrong or the situation will get larger. If we freeze, we're going to just get more abused and we can't really lean into flight because a lot of us have a really hard time running. And so A lot of us lean into fawning to prevent the harm, which obviously creates more harm because we start to normalize the behavior or normalize abusive behaviors. So I wanted to talk about what fawning looks like in abusive situations because I'm hopeful that it will help you make sense of this and see where you are when this is happening for you. When I noticed that I was in the fawn response in my last relationship, It was when I was giving into behaviors that I would not accept in my normal life. I was behaving in a way that I wouldn't behave with other people just to prevent the harm. And that looked like agreeing to plans that I didn't want to do, staying up later than I wanted to just to appease him, not talking about what's going on for me or what I actually felt because I knew he wasn't going to listen. Not starting a conflict, meaning not standing up for myself, and a whole other host of issues, including responding to texts the way that he would want me to respond because I didn't want an argument over it. And my inner beliefs sounded like I hoped if I care enough for him, he will care for me, or I can't show my feelings because he's going to retaliate. I remember telling a friend, I'm always walking on eggshells because I just never know when there's going to be an explosion or I need to change my mindset based on their mood. I work with a lot of people that are in very similar situations and I hear a lot of the same beliefs all the time. If I do X, then they will do Y. And this is because when we're in a fawn response, we bypass our own needs And in a lot of cases, our own sense of identity, our own sense of authenticity for the sake of giving into their needs. And in adulthood, any unresolved fawn responses lead to patterns of people pleasing and codependency, right? So when we are a child, we can see how a child might naturally fawn. But when that response becomes what we do in adulthood, We sacrifice our own needs for the sake of maintaining relationships that in most cases are very unhealthy. A lot of times when we leave the relationship, we're still in the fawn response. Unless we are in a space of no contact, no communication, there's a high likelihood that we're still fawning. And if we know anything about a narcissistic relationship, they usually don't just like go away, right? They hoover, it comes back, it's around. And if you share a child with a narcissist, it's going to be extremely difficult. And so... I remember trying to set sub boundaries before I even knew that I was fawning with my ex and begin to break away from some of the expectations that they had of me. But it was very challenging because when we're trauma bonded, the trauma bond doesn't just go away when we decide to break up with somebody. We're in that trauma bond for a long time. We're healing from that trauma bond. We're learning what that, what we thought, what we did. And My ex had this expectation that I should be picking up the phone for him whenever he called, when the relationship was over. And sometimes I would pick up or I would call back because if I knew what would come if I didn't, but that was not what was best for me. And 
when we're fawning, we're not in that part of our brain that's healthy. We are, again, in a trauma response in the same way that we would be in fight, flight, and freeze. We're not able to reach that point of reason in our minds. Because when we are in that trauma response, our brain shuts down those non-essential systems to help us survive the perceived threat. Our brain releases stress hormones like adrenaline and other neurochemicals, and it activates these trauma responses, which disconnects us from the part of our brain that is conducting reasoning and cognitive processing. So when we are acting this way, we are not thinking clearly. When we are fawning, we are not thinking clearly. And it's important just to notice that that is turned on and our reason is turned off. So when people say like, I don't know why I did this, or I don't know why I just keep giving in, you're not actually thinking through it clearly because your trauma response is turned on. When you create space, when you're able to breathe, when you're able to regulate, that's when you're able to reason, figure out what's going on, make a plan, come back to yourself. I often talk on this podcast about how abusive behavior becomes normal, or we start to normalize abusive behavior. And that is absolutely what happens when we're in this fawn response. It almost teaches us to normalize the behavior because that's what's going to keep us safe. And so some of the ways that it shows up or some of the ways that you might be able to notice when you're in this cycle is if you are people-pleasing to avoid conflict, prioritizing other people's needs over your own not saying no, not setting boundaries. And so for example, if you say, I'm not picking up the phone for you, you can text me if you need something, but then the phone keeps ringing and then eventually you pick up the phone because you get scared and not hold your boundary, that would be leaning into the phone response. The ringing of the phone would most likely activate that trauma response within you. And so what do we do with that, right? Like if you're listening to this and you're like, crap, I'm definitely always in this response. What can we do? And so if you are struggling with a fawn response, I'm going to tell you what I tell my clients. It's important to focus on increasing awareness of your emotions, which means understanding how you actually feel, not how they feel, and seeing how you feel without thinking about their feelings in the background. Validating your needs and developing boundaries. Boundaries with abusers and narcissists can be incredibly hard and forcing yourself to fit into a place that's not right for you is going to be equally challenging. So I always want to work with where you are and I will encourage you to think of one to two areas that you need to see change. And so I'm going to give an example of what that looked like because if we look at our relationship and we're like, oh my God, I need a boundary in every single area, that's not going to help. And so Actually, I will give two examples. I'll give one that has to do with my child, and I'll give one that had to do with my emotionally abusive and likely narcissistic ex. And actually, I'll start there. And so after the relationship ended, he still felt like he had a right to talk to me whenever he wanted to. And it was very clear the relationship was over. It was one of those breakups that when he broke up with me, I was like, oh my God, I have this sigh of relief right now. I'm out, it is done, and I just have to not go back. And so after that relationship, he would call, he would text, he would have expectations of me, but they were only on his terms. And I was still trauma bonded. I still did want to talk. I was struggling with no contact. You know, I was talking to my coach like every other day about why and how I need to set no contact. And I was having a really hard time with it. I was really sad all the time. And every time we talked, we'd fight. And so when he would like call me randomly and sometimes it was like, can you pick this up for me? Or like, do you have that there? And it was like, almost felt like it was for his connection to me and not about me. And so after I started to set more boundaries and more blowouts started to happen and more phone calls started to happen, I decided that I'm not picking up the phone anymore unless I know what it's about. That was one boundary I felt like I could set. I am not answering the phone unless I know what we're going to talk about. And he did not like that. He did not like having to text me what we're going to talk about if he was calling. So if he'd call, I'd send the text. And so 
the font, if I was in my font response, I would have picked up the phone or called back because I wouldn't have been able to deal with the repercussions of me not doing that. And other than like being yelled at, there may have not been a solid quote unquote repercussion, but I was trauma bonded. It felt like hell to not give in to something. But the boundary that I chose to keep was I'm not picking up the phone unless I know what we're talking about. And then soon that boundary became, if you yell at me, I'm hanging up the phone. And if you call me back and yell at me again, I'm blocking you. And it took some work to get there, but I needed to set a boundary on where I was so that I could release at least my trauma response from coming up in that area and begin to think clearly. The way that this showed up with my child's dad was that I would get emails from him that had absolutely nothing to do with the kid. Or if it it would be a manipulative way of using my kid to initiate control on me in some way. And so I started to say, okay, when I get these emails, it puts me in trauma response. It puts me in defending. It puts me in answering questions I don't want to answer or replying to things that I don't need to reply to. It takes me out of my life. And so I started to read through the emails, like looking for the line that I actually had to respond to. And so it was like, where's Waldo? Like, where do I actually have to respond? And I would like to tell you that I did this perfectly and I would have gotten like an A plus, but it was probably more like a C. I did the best that I could. It did help. I am much better at it now. It took a long time, but it got me to stop just responding out of fear and instead responding when I felt my best, when I could respond from a place of integrity, when I wasn't getting into conversations that were not right for me. And that was really helpful for me. And so I want to encourage you that if you're noticing that this is a pattern that you see yourself in, think about where you are in the relationship and what are some areas that are consistently problematic. Like I said, in in both of my examples, actually, my relationship was over at that point. So setting boundaries around communication was important. So I wasn't getting stuck back into the cycle. When I was in the relationship, I noticed I'd be fawning when I was not speaking up for how I felt or when I would have sex when I didn't want to, or I'd go to events that I didn't want to. And I could probably think of countless more things, but I did a lot of things to not be abused in that relationship. And at that time, I remember trying to figure out what I was going to do because leaving felt really hard. And when I fought back, he'd fight harder. And when I did walk away or when I did like leave during a fight, it'd be held against me forever because abusers don't respect boundaries. I say that all the time. They don't accept boundaries. So if you are noticing that you're in some of these patterns of people pleasing, giving in, doing things you don't want to do, feeling constantly overwhelmed, not even knowing who you are anymore, critiquing yourself, you are likely in that fawn response, which is not your wise thinking response. And that's where you want to begin to create some space. It's also important to realize and give yourself a bit of grace that you're doing this because it is a trauma response. Our trauma responses click on to keep us safe. It's here to help you. But once you know that, and once you know what's going to happen, it might be hard to look at. It might be hard to see what needs to happen from this place. But I can promise you that setting boundaries and beginning to create some space that you can think for yourself is going to help you so much. And it is one of the first steps to healing. And so I hope that this was helpful. And if you do have questions, I would love to do another podcast on this topic because I think it's really important. You can find me at emotionalabusecoach.com. You can email me at jessica at jessicanightcoaching.com. You can find me on Instagram at emotionalabusecoach. And if you are beginning to notice that you are in an abusive relationship and you want to begin to set boundaries and create that space, I invite you to look up my relationship recovery program that will be linked below in the show notes. It is the first step towards healing. 